Welcome everyone to Mozzie's Kitchen. I am Wolfman Mozzie, and this is a series where I make different recipes based off of video games or other nerdy things. Today is going to be a meal based off the video game Witcher 3, which is one of my favorites. We have two uh, dishes that we're going to be making today. The first one is a chicken sandwich with mushrooms and a parsley sauce. And the second is beer pottage. I didn't know what pottage was going into this, but it looked intriguing. Apparently pottage is the French word meaning a thick and creamy soup. When I looked at the picture on the recipe, it has like croutons on it and stuff, but it looked very similar to a beer cheese soup. If you're familiar with that. But this one's a little different. Where traditional pottage or maybe even a beer pottage would be something of a German beer with maybe a cheddar cheese, a, sh a sharper cheese. Apparently a Polish pottage is a little different. It's actually uh, sweeter. It's heavier and sweeter. So I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it, but uh, yeah. But let's go ahead and start cooking, shall we? We're going to start with our marinade for our chicken uh, by putting a stout beer. I chose Guinness, garlic, spicy mustard, half of a lemon, and sweet paprika into a saucepan. Put that saucepan on a low heat. I actually chose not to add the spicy mustard. It's up to your tastes. Uh, you also want to add a little salt and pepper. Once some of the liquid has evaporated on the marinade and it's thickened up, you want to go ahead and add the honey. Uh, it says to be careful not to add too much, so if you want to add it by taste, you're more than welcome to. I just added um, a little drizzle into mine. I didn't want it overly sweet, uh, just based off of my personal tastes. And then you're going to want to reduce it for a little bit longer to thicken up. In total, it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes for all that to reduce into the marinade that you want. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over to our chicken. Now, it, the recipe calls for boneless chicken breasts. Uh, Bone-in chicken was actually on sale, so I'm just going to debone the chicken breasts, which I was gonna leave out of the video, but then I was like, huh, people may actually want to see or may not know how to debone a chicken breast, and it's actually really easy. So next time you're at the grocery store, if you're looking for boneless chicken breasts and bone-in chicken breast is cheaper, then why not save a little bit of money? Anyway, uh, I started by peeling off the skin. That's just personal preference. You, if you want it on, you're more than welcome to. But you're going to want to start by looking for the bone or cartilage that's at the tip of the breast right here. And you're going to want to cut along that bone to separate the breasts from the bone itself. Now, don't be afraid to kind of pull it with your hands as well. Obviously, you're going to want to cut along the bone because it's going to give you a cleaner separation between the meat and the bone. But again, don't be afraid to pull away at the like tendons and stuff. Like, a lot of those you can just break with your hand. And you don't have to be the most precise. A lot of the extra stuff that you're seeing here, you can cut away at the end. And I do so uh, at the end once I've separated the breast. You can cut it away as you go to it, just whichever. Now there's a group of bones and tendons at the very end here. There's a, actually, you can see there's a little bone sticking in the chicken breast. I'll separate that later. Um, but you just want to cut along, keep cutting along the bone, make it easy to separate. You see, I'm feeling it with my fingers just to see like where the bone is and where the chicken breast itself is. You got these nice tendons right here that you're going to have to either snap or, or cut. Uh, I'll show you a, a way to separate those here in a second, but just go ahead and cut through them. Cut that last bit off and separate the breast from the rest of the bones. It does help, by the way, to have a sharp knife. So if you need to sharpen your knife, do so. Just be really careful because it can slip quite easily. Then we have the chicken breast separated, but there's still a bits and pieces. There's a couple bones and tendons. So I'm going to start with the bones. You can cut them out, but honestly, these bigger bones, you can pretty much just pull out as you can see in the video i'm feeling around for that bone see how deep it goes then cut a little incision just pull the rest of the bone out like so there we go see that big white tendon that's going through the breast itself It's actually a trick to getting this out. You can try and like pull it out or cut it out, but it's really hard to get a firm grasp on it to pull out. Then you take a fork and just hold the fork 
against the breast and pull the tendon away from the fork. Voila, that easy. Once those chicken breasts are separated from the bone, we're just gonna go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag and add the marinade into the Ziploc bag. Go ahead and seal it up. And I give it a little extra shake. A little shake, 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 shake. Get that marinade all around the, the breast itself. So it's just good and marinated. Then I roll it up and just put it in the fridge and let it marinate for uh, at least an hour. Now, while that's marinating, we're gonna go ahead and start with our beer pottage. To start with, we're gonna go ahead and zest our lemon. We won't need the lemon immediately, but I like to go ahead and just zest it now and get it with so I have it ready. Next, let's go ahead and get the egg yolks ready. So if you're curious on how to separate the yolk from the eggs, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, you want to just crack the egg just like normal, right down the middle. The trick to this next part is to do it slowly. What you're going to want to do is pour the egg yolk back and forth in between the two halves of the shells so that the egg whites fall into the, the bowl below. And then once it's fully separated, you just put the egg yolk in a different bowl. Uh, if you're a super good kitchen pro person, you'll drop your egg yolk into the egg whites. And if you're really lucky, it won't break. And if you're luckier, you'll be able to fish it out with your hands in a claw like motion. One of those machine claws you see at those arcade games and transfer it to the yolk bowl. That's only if you're lucky. Or if you're clumsy like me. All right, now to start our beer pottage, what we're going to want to do is add our egg yolks and sugar into a small or medium saucepan. Uh, you want to beat it with a whisk until the color lightens and is a pale yellow so that they evenly combined. While continue whisking, you want to slowly pour in the cream. Once the mixture is warm but not simmering, start slowly pouring in the beer, gently stirring it until fully incorporated. And you want to add the cloves, cinnamon, and lemon zest. Now, I didn't have crushed cloves, so I had to go ahead and ground them manually, but whatever you have. So once you add the clove, cinnamon, and lemon zest, go ahead and continue cooking it on a low heat until the soup thickens. Now, mine actually didn't thicken up as much as I was hoping it was going to, so we had to a little help and add some extra ingredients to thicken it up. Now it says in the recipe that you want to heat up the cheese curds in the microwave. I did not do that. I just went ahead and left them at room temperature so they warmed up and softened. Now for the second part of the recipe for the pottage, there's instructions for making your own rye croutons. I'll be honest with you. I didn't follow these steps. Uh, you're supposed to cut the rye loaf uh, into like normal toast style bread. Uh, spray it with olive oil, salt it, um, add some butter, and then toast it in the oven. I just put it in the toaster. Put it in the toaster, toast it up, cut it up into croutons, and it turned out fantastic. So that's what I went. But if you want to add a little fancy pizzazz to it, you go ahead and do that oven stuff. Now the soup is done. We're going to go ahead and just leave it on a low heat uh, until we are ready to serve. So let's go ahead and move over to the chicken. So we have a little bit more time on the marinade, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the sauce, uh, which is going to be mayonnaise, parsley, lemon juice, and salt and pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and first off, chop up my parsley. So it is finely chopped. Mix it in with the mayo, squeeze the lemon juice, and I actually just mix it all in the mayo jar because I had a little bit left. And we'll just put that in the fridge off to the side for later. Now, it says that you want to cook the meat on the grill, but let's be honest, it's still cold and our grill is covered in snow. So I went with the next best thing, air fryer. Now you may say, but in the air fryer, didn't the chicken turn out dry? Oh, nay, nay, it was nice and juicy. But we're gonna go ahead and pop those bad boys in. Let them cook on the poultry setting, which is a 20 minute cook at 350. We'll check on those in a bit. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move to the mushrooms, which are gonna be part of the topping. Go ahead and chop them up into slices. Added some butter to a saucepan, toss those mushrooms right on in. 
stirring occasionally until they're sauteed. Alrighty, chicken is done and it is nice and juicy. I took some more of that sourdough bread, sliced it and toasted it. Let's go ahead and assemble a sandwich. Starting off with the toast, I added a layer of the parsley mayo, some mushrooms, and the chicken right on top of the sauce and close up the sandwich a good slice let's look at that cross section that is good again the chicken came out nice and juicy people might be hesitant in cooking chicken in an air fryer as they may think it dries it out trust me it does not if done properly it is nice and juicy and this was wonderful now i went ahead and assembled the beer pottage soup added the cheese curds on top with the croutons uh, I really enjoyed the sandwich. I thought the the parsley mayo was delicious. For the pottage, um, I enjoy trying new things, so I wanted to stick as close to the recipe as I could. But going into it, I knew that six tablespoons of brown sugar was way too much for my personal taste, so I ended up not particularly liking it. It was nice, it was rich, it was creamy, but it was just too sweet for me. So I think if I ever make it again, I'll probably not use brown sugar or use much less of it but uh it's up to you try it for yourself and see if you like it but yeah that'll do it thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed as always be sure to love each other and i'll see you in the next one bye